Pulsar Modular has come out with a new EQ plugin called the P422 Feyruz. I'm going to take a look at it and just give you a basic overview of the plugin. But just like the Sidecar plugin that I did a review of, which is actually the plugin that got me interested in Pulsar Modular, just like I said in that video, make sure that you check out the manual that comes with the plugin and read through that before you start diving into it because there's a lot of things going on under the hood and there's some parameters that might not actually make sense to you because they're very unique. So make sure you check out the manual, but I'll give you a basic overview. So here's the Feyruz. I would say the first thing to look at is this control over here to where you control the level of each of the bands. When you have it on, it looks like a pair of stairs. That's a stepped control. I mean, literally, you're going up in 0.5 dB increments. If you want something a little bit smoother, you can turn that off and actually fine-tune it and just have it like you would normally, non-stepped. Up here, you'll see these controls. Now, these, the first two are very similar to each other, and this is one of the things that makes this EQ very unique. This is what's called a push-pull style of EQ. So on this first setting, what happens is you come over here and you find the band that you want to focus in on. So let's say we want to focus in on about 12K and boost that. With this push-pull design, what's happening is that it's honing in and giving you a boost right around that 12K area that you choose. But at the same time, as you boost one area or push it, it's pulling down and taking down another area that's kind of musically similar to that other band. So as you're pushing up one band, you're actually pulling down another band, push, pull. Now, Pulsar Modular isn't very specific in what's going on in different bands and what, you know, what corresponds to what band when you're pushing one, what's happening with the other band. They're not very clear on that, but that's a good thing. That forces you to use your ears, which I'm a huge proponent of. Sometimes you want a EQ that tells you exactly what's going on so that you can solve problems. I think you could do that with the Feyruz, but so far, kind of my gut feeling is this is the kind of EQ that you're going to want to use to add color and just use your ears. That's where I've found it the most useful. So in this push-pull design... These first two bands, the first one's pretty subtle, which i that's what I've fallen in love with this EQ right off the bat. This first option for push-pull can be extremely subtle, so it's great. I've tended to use it at the end of my chains towards the end where I do all my kind of nitty-gritty, you know, fixer EQs and stuff. And then at the end, I might say, well, there's a little bit too much low end or maybe I want this a little brighter. This first option in the push-pull kind of configuration is great for that. It can be pretty subtle. The next one is push-pull as well, but it's a little bit more extreme. I think maybe the cue's a little bit wider and it kind of makes some more extreme moves. If you're not really hearing much on that first push-pull option, try the second one. It's a lot more noticeable. And then finally, you have a normal, I think you just call it a bell curve. If you think of something like an API EQ, where you have a proportional cue to where as you increase the level, the cue on the band starts to narrow, this is going to be a lot more familiar to a lot of you. And it was for me. As soon as I switched to that last band, it pretty much did what I would expect an EQ to do. So very similar, it's proportional. So the more you push the level, the narrower that cue is going to get, or vice versa, as you go down, it's going to narrow. So that gives you on each of the four bands a lot of options in terms of what you can do. If you want to be a little more surgical and you want to do something specific in terms of cutting or boosting, this last option is going to make a lot more sense and be like more traditional EQs out there. However, if you're bold and you want to use your ears and just kind of listen to what it's doing and not look at a screen or see what's happening, those first push-pull options are great for that. So you obviously have the knob to select what area of the EQ band you're selecting when you're boosting and cutting. Up here, you have a low, low pass. Always get those mixed up. 20 years later, high pass, low pass. 
So this is a low pass to where you can kind of shave off a little bit of your high end. Just like the EQ that came with the sidecar plug-in, I have found myself kind of boosting highs a little more extreme than I normally would and countering that by rolling some high end off with that low pass. Great option. I love it. Let's see, what's next? The voicing switch, that's actually the first thing we're going to listen to in a minute. As soon as you throw this plug in on a track, before you do anything with it, it actually has a little bit of a color. It's just like an analog EQ with, you know, a bunch of transformers or op amps and stuff in it. As soon as you throw this plug in on something, it sounds a little different. And with this voicing switch, along with the transformer option down here, you have a lot of options in terms of how hard you want to drive the quote-unquote analog circuitry in the plug-in. So it defaults to the middle. If you need things to be a little bit more clearer and more articulate, you can kind of go down with the voicing. But as you increase the voicing with that transformer option on, if you go all the way up, it can get pretty gritty pretty quickly. That's another great option. Uh, those three bands are pretty similar. And by the way, you can turn off each of the bands if you want. So if there's a band you're not using, you can always turn it off to be a lot more um, transparent. Low end, this is another area where there's a lot going on. So same thing as other bands, but you've got this trimmer control, which as you increase that, it's almost, it's not like you're really increasing the EQ audibly, but in the low end, especially when you start turning on that trimmer option and turning it up, you can definitely feel a difference in the low end in the subs. Really great on kick drums, sometimes a bass guitar when you want it a little more punchy. That's another great option for kind of getting extreme if you need to, or just subtle. And then you've got your shelves down here as well, where you can turn them down a little bit, or you can increase a little bit on the low and the high end if you want to. So that is a very basic overview of the plugin. Again, please make sure that you check out the manual and read through it. It'll be really helpful. I'd say the only other thing you need to keep in mind is there's actually a mix knob up here, which is great. If you find yourself being a little too more too extreme on some tracks, you can go in and blend in a little bit of the dry signal. That's really helpful. So uh, I don't really like doing reviews of EQs very often because it can... I think it can be pretty boring, but in this case, it's a very colorful EQ. So I kind of wanted to showcase that and bigger picture in this video. I want to show you the cumulative effect of this EQ when you throw it over a whole track. So I recently did a review on Soyuz Microphone's new Ambisonic microphone. I did a mix of that song and took all the Ambisonic tracks down to stereo. And if you want to check that out, check out that video. It's pretty interesting. Ambisonics is really cool. But I've taken the song that I recorded with that Ambisonic mic. I brought it into a new session and I basically bypassed all of the EQ things that I had done, not only on each individual track, but the master bus as well. And I'm going to replace all the EQ in that session on the master bus in each individual track with the Feyrus, so you can hear the cumulative effect of this plugin when you start to use it subtly and stack it over a whole production. So the first thing I'd, I want to do for you to listen to is I'm going to throw the Feyrus EQ on every single track as well as the master bus and I'm just going to leave it in its stock setting. I'm not going to do any EQ, I'm just going to throw it on each individual track in the master bus and we'll go back and forth with the EQ on and the EQ off. So you can just get a basic idea of what the starting point is in terms of the color of this plugin. Because it's it's not a clean digital EQ. It's kind of a fresh take on an analog design. So let's hear what the Feyrus EQ just does when it's in the circuit over a whole mix. I've seen the in mysterious ways Move a heart stone I've done my best to settle all these divides But I'm still outside the city Yeah. 
Everybody's building churches in a small town The truth will cost you ten percent But it could set you free So with that EQ over a whole mix and on each individual track, I think going back and forth with it bypassed and in the mix over everything, you can really hear what kind of color this is adding just in its stock settings. If you want to take it a step further, you can actually use the Feyruz as a saturator and not even EQ things. So let me show you how to set that up real quick. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to put the Feyruz EQ just on the master bus of the track and we're going to do some pretty extreme saturating settings so that you can hear what it does as a saturator as opposed to an EQ and really push it. So what you'll want to do is you'll actually want to go in, let's actually put it in its default setting, you want to go in and turn off all of the EQ bands first, so turn off all four of those, then you're going to want to boost each channel. Now granted, the EQ is off, so at this point we're just boosting level generally, not in any individual band or anything. Once those are boost, boosted, you're going to want to turn on the transformer, and I'm going to go ahead and oversample. And then with the voicing switch, which actually you know controls how hard you're hitting the quote-unquote analog circuitry in the plug-in, you're going to want to turn voice all the way up and then with your mix setting, you can go ahead and set that to 100% dry and then actually start to blend in that extreme saturation a little bit. Now, this is how Pulsar Modular suggests that you set this plugin up in order for it to be just purely a saturator. There's obviously some other ways you can decide on how to do this, and you can even set this up a little bit if you actually still want to use it as an EQ and not purely a saturator. But I do want to hear what happens when you take this plug into an extreme and saturate it a lot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play you some samples of the whole mix. The Feyruz EQ is only on the master bus, so it's just on the master over everything, not individual tracks. I'm going to set the EQ up like this, and then we're going to listen to it with a 100% wet mix to where it's really saturating. Because again, it's probably not going to sound good and musical, but I want to push it to an extreme so you can actually hear what it's doing. So we're going to hear it dry without the plug-in. We're going to hear it with the saturation at 100 and pushed really hard. Then I'm going to turn the mix down to 50% so that it's just blending in a bit of it so you can hear it at a little bit more tame setting with the saturation. So let's take a listen to that. No one ever tells you move into a small town You'll be everything wrong with the world outside those county lines Everybody tries to sell you in a small town Kim trails to wedding bells the noble remedies pick Mary Kay SUV rolling coal in front of some hybrid freak with a California license Seen the Lord work in mysterious ways Move a heart stone I've done my best to settle all these divides But I'm still outside the city Now that you have a reference of kind of the analog sound of the plugin and what it's imparting sound wise before we start EQing, 
let's get a little bit more practical and start doing a whole mix with this. Now, usually what I do at the top of a session when I start to mix is that I take all the faders in the session and I get a general, just quick mix of the song. I set some general panning and then I set up my chain on my master bus. And usually that involves right off the bat, just setting a general overall EQ on the mix and some overall compression. So what I've done in this next sound clip is I've found a setting with the Feyre's EQ on the master bus that sounded good with all the faders and panning that I thought was a good starting point. And this is important to set up first because as I mix, I'm going to be listening to every single thing and every choice that I do going through that master bus chain. So it's important that I set up a general EQ starting point over the whole mix so as I start to make changes on individual tracks, I'm hearing it through those settings I've already set. So let's listen to the settings that I chose for the overall mix bus with the Feyre's EQ and hear it on and off. Now that I've got kind of my master bus chain set up and my overall EQ for the mix set, now we can start looking at individual instruments and EQing them one at a time. And keep in mind, because this is how I choose to work and how I do all my mixes, this is going to add up to a cumulative effect because not only do we have the Feyre's EQ going on the master bus and doing something overall to the mix, now I'm throwing the Feyre's on again on individual instruments and making choices as I hear them through the EQ that's on the master bus. That might be a little bit confusing, but overall just keep in mind I'm stacking this because this is generally how I work. So I'm going to try not to make any too many like really big moves because I want to show you at the end of this video how all of this adds up into something really cool and you can really hear what the CQ does when you start stacking it. So let's just start going through individual instruments.
Everybody's building churches in a small town The truth will cost you 10% But it could set you free Tax-deductible LLCs Herba Hive's got nothing on the big JC When we preach our loving dollar signs Book a mission to a third world place White girl safaris lead to marital bliss It's always how the stories go I've seen the Lord work in mysterious ways And move a heart of stone I've done my best to settle all these divides But I'm still outside the city lights All right, so we've done individual instruments on the mix. The Feyruz is on every single channel of the mix. I've got it on the master bus as well. This is really going to add up, and you're really going to be able to hear the cumulative effect of this EQ at this point because I'm going to play you the full mix with the Feyruz on every channel and the master bus, and then I'm going to take it off everything so that we can go back and forth and really hear what it's doing to the overall mix. I think that's a good stopping point, so let's just go ahead and hear the whole mix and hear the cumulative effect of this plugin. No one ever 
tells you move into a small town You'll be everything wrong with the world outside those county lines Everybody tries to sell you in a small town Kim trails to wedding bells The noble remedies A big Mary Kay SUV Rolling coal in front of some hybrid freak With a California license plate I've seen the Lord work in mysterious ways Move a heart My best to settle all these divides But I'm still outside the city Still outside the city lights 